Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. And for today's video, I'm going to be busting some natural hair myths. So I've been on this journey for a few years now. And over the years, I've come across quite a few, you know, things said about natural hair that's not necessarily true. But of course, I had to learn these for myself. And so I just wanted to share them with you. Okay, so let's get started on myth number one so the first myth is that wearing a protective style will grow your hair like in that order like if you install braids or you install a wig that's the reason why your hair grows so when i was younger um i think that my mom had cut all my hair off and so in an attempt to get the hair to grow a little bit faster she put in some braids but that's what that was because she believed that the braids had some magic formula inside of it that would cause my hair to grow now this is untrue okay not true the reason why your hair grows is because you know, you're not touching it as much you're not faffing with your hair you're not manipulating it so it is in a low manipulation uh, style and so that's the reason why it grows you can still install braids and a wig and end up with breakage and the reason for that is because people think that when they install a protective style they don't need to take care of their hair so they stop washing their scalp and the hair they stop moisturizing they stop hydrating they stop caring for the hair and you have to care for your hair regardless of whether it's out or whether it's in a protective style and so your hair can grow when you're using a protective style but there are a few things you need to be mindful of and those things are um, cleansing i just mentioned it so regularly cleansing your hair washing your hair while it's in your braids or if you've installed a wig take it off you know after a week or a week and a half um, depending on your hair and your scalp and your needs give it a good wash re-moisturize it and re you know put that wig back on or in terms of braids you can wash your hair while it's in the braids so get like a um a bottle with the nozzle maybe i'll find a picture and insert it um and you can put your shampoo and some water in there lift the braids up so you can get to your scalp and squeeze that bottle you know so that the the shampoo situation can get to your scalp and then give it a good rub with the pads of your fingers give it a good rub give your scalp a good cleanse and once you've done that, moisturize. So you can still use your styling products down the length of your braid. So what I like to do is I add some leave-in conditioner and some water and here's a great tip. If you bought products that you don't necessarily like, I keep them for when I do protective styles because I dilute it with water and I use it to moisturize my hair. You know, No one's gonna see the hair under the braids, but at least it still gets some good moisture. So, I put it, that in a spray bottle and I just, you know, pull the braids apart and I spritz them down the length and I kind of press it in because I have low porosity hair and my hair doesn't, you know, easily open up to things. So I have to squeeze that moisture in there. But once I've done that, I let it air dry and there you go. Your scalp is clean, your hair is moisturized. You can keep that in for a while. The other thing I want you to be mindful of is not to install your protective styles too tight. Doing that can also cause hair loss and breakage and it actually happened to me. So these things can happen. So I have a rule. I mean, if I don't really trust that you're going to install my braids well, I'm not going to have them done with you. I'm just going to do them myself. So make sure that you don't install it too tight. And then the second thing um, regarding the installation of protective styles is to not keep it in for too long. You want to, of course, have your hair in a low manipulation style, but you don't want to suffocate the hair for too long. So make sure that you are um, taking care of your hair under your braids or your wig, but also that you're taking it out at some point in time and just giving your hair good wash and just letting your hair be so that you can have good healthy hair braids or a wig they don't have something magic in them that make your hair grow caring for your hair in this low manipulation style is what causes your hair to grow so number one myth busted busted what should it be busted okay <laughs> okay so on the topic of growth let's talk about myth number two natural hair does not grow so that's not true i think in personal in my personal experience when i first uh embraced my natural hair 
I had that same worry, the worry that it wouldn't grow because I don't even know where that came from. But in all honesty, sometimes it seems as if your hair is not growing for various reasons. Um, number one, it could be that you have lots of shrinkage. I'm going to show you what that means in a second. Number two, you are not patient and consistent with your routine. Or number three, you are still doing things that cause hair breakage and hair loss, like um, using too much heat, wearing your hair too tightly, not following a regimen where your hair can actually, you know, flourish and, and grow healthily. Um, but I think number four, also you're just impatient. So shrinkage, let's talk about shrinkage. So my hair looks a little bit shrunken up, but I know that this is not the full length. So if I wanted to see how long my hair really is, I would pull it out like that. And then I can see how long my hair is. But if you're looking at it in a shrunken state, all the time you're going to feel discouraged another way in which you can tell that your hair is growing is that it gets thicker the density kind of you know increases sometimes your hair grows this way instead of that way so a few tips for you is number one if you want to not wear your hair in a shrunken state because it does something to the way you think about how your hair is growing give it a stretch um, either use the banding method or use some pom-poms or um, braid your hair and then loosen it and then that will show you you know give you a little bit more length um, use a little bit of heat on the roots not high heat just like medium just to stretch out the roots a little bit so that you can have some hang time the other tip i want to give you on this one is very important is and it comes into play with people who are generally impatient is to take pictures Take pictures of your hair, you know, very regularly. Take selfies of yourself and, you know, with your hair or maybe on wash days so that you can see the progress your hair is making because I promise you, your hair is growing. But it's just because you can't see it because you're impatient or whatever the fact may be, you are not able to see that growth and so you think that it isn't growing. Make sure that you are taking care of your hair so that it is healthy because healthy hair grows. So, like anything else, if you make sure that it is healthy, it will grow plants human beings hair nails so that's a tip for you and don't you ever let anyone ever tell you again that natural hair does not grow so myth number two busted myth number three and this one also comes from a personal place uh, and it is that one size fits all whether it is product usage routine um hair type whatever like we have this this idea or this you know perception that if we have our if we wear our hair naturally it should work the same way that someone else's hair works even if you know especially when we realize that someone has the same hair type that we do or the same porosity um, or it just looks the same and we're like oh my word what kind of products do you use and how do you get your hair like that and blah 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 trying to figure out how to keep your hair healthy by looking at what someone else is doing. So I'm not saying that we can't learn from each other, but what I do want to say is that one size does not fit all. Your hair is unique and it is special to you. And there are certain things that work for other people that will work for you. But my tips for you in this regard would be to do your research. Make sure that you figure out what your hair is about. Like, if it's low porosity or high porosity, what works best? Um, if you've got type blah, blah, blah hair, what works best? And then also trial those things. Don't just take it on face value. Someone says, use aloe vera in your shampoo and you just, you know, you take it and you run. Test it out. Try it out for a few weeks. Um, see how your hair responds to it and then you know make a call for yourself but also when it comes to routine i know that there are some girls who would for example wash their hair more than once a week and there are some girls who wash their hair once every two weeks um, there are some girls who deep condition every time they wash there are some girls who only do it once there are some girls who use mostly pro products that have protein in them and you know all of these things are just so different so i want to encourage you to do your research, go through trial and error, and enjoy your hair. Just get familiar with it. Uh, figure out when it is dry, when it is hydrated, what it enjoys, what it does not like. Um, 
even throughout the seasons, you know, because your hair will respond differently in the different seasons and in different climates. If you're traveling, also your hair will respond differently. So do not, you know, go after the trends. You see that Clicks has a three for two special on X, Y, and Z. And all of a sudden you're like, no, I have to buy this because it's on three for two. And Mrs. Jonathan said that I should use it. I promise you from personal experience, don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Keep your eyes focused on your own journey. Keep your eyes focused on your own hair. Stay in your lane. Do your research, trial and error, and just have fun with it. That is myth number three, one size fits all, busted. The last two myths are a little bit controversial, I think. Is controversial the word? So I think myth number four, in my opinion, in my opinion, is that natural hair is hard to maintain. I don't think this is true, it's relative. And the reason why I say that is because if you are someone who does not like routine, who is not consistent, who does not enjoy, you know, figuring things out for themselves, then it's going to be very hard for you to maintain because being on this natural hair journey, the one thing I've learned is that you always have to be open to learn and to grow. Uh, you will never have it all figured out because your hair, it takes one thing to just throw you off course. One thing that you thought was the right thing to do and then your hair is like, I will not have it. Uh, so what I want to say is that if you are impatient and if you are not as consistent, if you have a problem with doing research and you know all of these kinds of things you like the easy way out you enjoy just having someone else do your hair and you just do the bare minimum then it will be very hard for you to maintain one thing that i have to you know renew my mind around every time is that i'm trying to grow my hair as healthy as I can. I'm trying to get it to that, to the healthiest state with everything that I do, with every wash, with every moisturize, with every um, style, I, with every trim. I really am trying to get it to its healthiest state. And with that being said, I understand that there's a certain amount of work that has to go into maintaining that. I have to make sure that I, you know, I'm carving out time to wash my hair, to go through a routine. I have to be patient. I have to be so patient. I say this all the time. I feel like I repeat myself. In my Embrace Your Natural Hair video, I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, I'll link the video. But it's so important for us to practice patience. You see, if... <laughs> Listen, if you are wearing your hair naturally, especially if your hair requires a little bit more, like I've got you know my density is i would say medium maybe yeah low porosity type 4 hair um it is a challenge and it can sometimes be discouraging when i i mean it happened to me recently i bought some products and i used i put them in my hair once and immediately i could see the residue you know just like gathering on the top my hair felt dry it had a product on it but it felt dry it felt stringy um it actually smelled like mold it just smelled very moldy so those products didn't work they are still you know the tubs are full i think i bought a curling cream and a leave-in conditioner and i mean i can use the leave-in conditioner i can put it in a spritzing bottle and i can do it when i have braids but i mean these things happen so if you are going to be impatient inconsistent and you don't want to put in a little bit of effort it will be hard to maintain but don't give up if you are on this journey please don't give up just be patient with yourself be consistent and do not give up so myth number four natural hair is hard to maintain with its relativity that myth i think is busted is busted okay and the last myth which is as relative i think as the previous one is that natural having natural hair is time consuming now the previous point in this one kind of tie in together so I think that it can be time consuming it definitely can but it depends on 
your approach. I think, I'm saying I think a lot, because I do. Um, just like you would have a coffee date with a friend or you would carve out some time to clean your home or you would carve out some time for self-care, you do a, a mask, a face mask, you take a bath, etc. blah, blah, blah. You have to apply that to a hair routine. Um, if you carve out some time for it, and again, I spoke about this in my previous video. If you carve out time for it, it's almost like an appointment. So you know that you set out um, a space for you to focus on your hair. So you make that time to spend that time. <laughs> you make the time to spend the time needed, making sure that your hair is clean, moisturized, hydrated, styled, and ready to go. The other thing I wanna say about that is, again, make sure that when you style your hair, the style lasts for a few days. Don't be styling your hair every day because then you're going to get frustrated and in that regard, natural hair can be time consuming. But be smart, okay? Put your hair in a low manipulation style. I feel like I am saying the same thing over and over, but truly, personal experience. I used to do a lot of washing, but I think even with a wash and go, I wouldn't touch my hair for like minimum three days. I would, I would either put it in a high puff, take it down, sleep with a scarf on, wake up the next morning, put it in a high, you know? Um, but I do find that as, as I go on, I realize that rather doing a protective style works best for me. So this is a twist out and this is the first day that the twists are out so my hair is a little bit shrunken. There is quite a bit of frizz but you know I don't really mind it. But with this twist out I can do so many things to make sure that the style lasts for... I can probably wear it for five to seven days max. Like I can push it to a seven but then it will start to look crusty. But what I want to say is that really just focus on keeping your hair healthy, make sure it's cleansed, make sure it is moisturized. Uh, spend that time once a week or once every couple of days to do your deep conditioning, washing, moisturizing, styling, and then leave your hair for the next couple of days. Um, get creative with it. Think about how you could style your hair where you won't need to touch it. I know that um, flat twisting is really cute. So you can flat twist like half of your hair and you can leave the rest out and you can wear that style for like a few days because then you can tie it up, you can put it in a bun, you can put it into ponies and the flat twists kind of remain. So you're not doing all of these, you know, crazy things with your hair, which means that you spend less time. And number two, that you can maintain the health of your hair. So myth number five is busted. Busted. So thank you guys so much for watching. I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed it, that you've learned something new, or that this just was just comedy for you, I don't know. But I really wanna encourage you to chat to me in the comments, you know, what other myths have you come across on your journey that you think, you know, is necessary for us to bust. So I hope that you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. And before I go, before I go, I just wanna say, let's, lay down this comparison game let's lay it down we are not here to be the same we are not here to look like each other you are beautiful just the way you are make sure that you are focusing on yourself you are focusing on growing yourself in whatever way that may be if you're on your natural hair journey all you're trying to do is get it to its healthiest state not the healthy state that looks like your friend's hair or my hair or another YouTuber's hair, but your own hair. Let's be consistent. Let's focus on ourselves. Let's be open to learn and to grow, not be filled with pride where we feel like, oh no, I can't learn anything from you. Open yourself up to learn and really just enjoy the journey. I think lastly, I wanna say don't quit. Please, please don't quit. Please don't quit on any, you know, Thing you have in your heart that you want to achieve or an area where you want to grow do not quit you are gorgeous you are capable you have what it takes you can do it love you